Chapter 13 Writing the Damn Book Yes, it's finally time. And look, I have every single bit of confidence in you. I've had many students look at me with the same deer-in-the-headlights look that you're giving me now, and they finish their memoirs even though they never thought they could. You're going to also. Make that decision right now. This isn't an I hope I can do this situation. This is an I'm going to write and finish my memoir state of affairs. You're going to do this. The next question I always get is, how the frack am I supposed to do this? You're going to write this book scene by scene, that's all. Each of the scenes in your book will fit into one of those four structural boxes we talked about. But you might not actually know where those scenes fit yet. That's okay. You do not have to write in chronological order. You can write scenes from your outline in any order at all. Write what excites you. If you can't wait to write that summer vacation morning memory, write it now. Move toward what you want to write. You don't have to start at the beginning. You can write scenes and throw them into a virtual bin in the middle of the floor and sort them into their appropriate boxes later. You'll be able to look at each scene and ask yourself, was I reacting at this point? Or was I the actor in my own life making my own decisions? Does this particular bit belong in Act 2 or Act 3? But you decide those things later. For now, you're just writing a crappy first draft that you can fix later. If you wince at that, start trying to accept crappiness. Personally, I find it useful to challenge myself to write truly terribly. At least then I have a goal I can strive for, and it works. I get my words done, and they're always, always fixable. Yours will be too. However, many people, including myself, are linear writers and don't want to write out of order. We like to start at the beginning and write through to the end. That's fine too. Just know that you don't have to stick to it. I get pretty rigid myself, both in fiction and memoir, and I shove myself through scenes like I'm trying to fit a jar of peanut butter into a thimble. I will get there if it kills me. This can be unpleasant, but it's my way. You'll find your way as you go. Here's a bit of advice to help you get there. The beginning. One, have a word count goal and write it on your calendar for the week. Don't write out your word count goal for the whole book because I guarantee you'll miss a week's goal and then you'll have to rejigger your whole calendar for a month or more. Ask me how I know. But if you have three hours free for writing this week, and if you think you can get 3,000 words written in that time, plan it. On Sunday morning, you'll write 1,000. Tuesday night, 500. Thursday, another 500. Friday morning, the last 1,000. Write it down, then when the time rolls around, write. 2. Celebrate that first day of writing. You will feel elated, guaranteed. Huzzah! You did it! You've started something huge. If you drink, have a glass of champagne. If you don't, eat your favorite dessert. Toast yourself and your supreme daring. You're amazing. You're a writer. You're a writer if you're writing. That's how it works. Claim that. 3. Know that the next time you sit down, it might not feel as great as it did the first day. The high does wear off, and writing becomes more painful the further we go into a piece of work. That's okay, and it's totally normal. I often liken it to exercise. It sucks to work out, but it feels so good to have it done. 4. Your voice is your voice is your voice. You'll have days when you know in your very bones that you're the very worst writer who ever lived. A caveman scratching symbols on a wall in charcoal is a better writer than you are. And then you'll have days when your writing is miraculous. Your words could convert a Catholic nun to Satanism. Your sentences leap off the page and build castles around your ears. The astonishing thing is this. When you go back to revise, later... You won't be able to tell which were the days you wrote well or badly. Your voice is your voice. 
The way we feel about our writing changes like weather along with our moods. Don't trust moods. Just keep showing up day after day. Five. After you've begun, it's normal to feel that you'll never finish. It's such a Herculean effort just to write one scene. How are you ever going to write the whole book? It's an impossible task. You can't do this. Yes, you can. Yes, you will. One scene at a time, or even just one paragraph at a time. Many short writing sessions add up to a finished book. You're on the way. The middle. One. The middle part might be difficult. Wait, it will be. Often called the sagging middle, this is common. I call a first draft the who cares draft because it's easy when stuck in the middle to think nobody cares. Your mom doesn't care. Your husband is sick of hearing about it. Your kids roll their eyes. Worst of all, you stop caring. It's hard work. Who's going to want to read all this crap? No one, that's who. Might as well quit before I waste any more time on this stupid endeavor. Normal. That's so, so normal. No one cares, not even you. That changes. You'll just have to trust me on this. You'll find your mojo again, and when you're revising, later, you'll love the book again. Except that you might not love it while writing it. Two. This is the point in the book where I recommend Scrivener as a word processing program and all-around excellent toolbox. Microsoft Word is a powerful, if sometimes aggravating, tool, and you can certainly use it for a whole book. Many, many writers do, and all of the publishing industry relies on it every step of the way through submissions and edits. But Scrivener has an excellent feature that's missing from Word, and I consider it an essential feature for memoirists. It holds each scene or chapter in a separate bucket. This means you can write your scenes in any order and then just drag and drop them where you want them to be. Later, when you send your book to your editor or your agent, more on this later, you'll export your book as a complete, tidy Word document, but while you're actually writing, you can dart in and out of the different buckets. Also, Scrivener is great at holding other things in other buckets, Research, photos, web pages, lists of characters. I'm writing in it right now. I even use it to organize my classes. It's an organization tool that just works for writers. At the time of writing, it's $45 and worth every penny. The end. I'm scared of writing the ending. I want to get it right. Of course you are. The end is scary. You spent all this time writing your book. What if you screw it up at the last minute? This is how we get over this, and this is what I have everyone in my class do. Write the ending right after you write your beginning. Even if you're a linear writer, do this exercise. Don't worry, it'll change in revision. This is just a rough draft. Do the exercise right after you've written your first scene. Remember that in memoir, you are chronicling the change in yourself that occurred over the course of time. The ending will show the synthesis of that. If you're writing about the three years you spent teaching English in China, and if your big personal change was that you moved from being scared of everything to being brave, then in that last chapter, your reader wants to see that. Tell us about it. Show us in detail how you landed back in the States. Your mother wanted to meet you at the airport, but you told her no, you'd grab a cab. You walk into her house a different person. Show us that. You already know the ending. It's probably the most recent thing to happen to you in your whole memoir anyway. It will be easy to write. So write it now. Then you'll have your ending, a pushpin on the map that you're headed toward. You'll spend the rest of your time in the book driving in the direction of this ending, and knowing your ending informs the rest of your writing. Of course it can change. You might write the end of your book only to figure out that it's actually where you want to start. This happens more often than you think. Perhaps it gives you an idea for a different structure of your book. Do you want to start your book with the you of today and then flash back? Do you want to anchor the beginning in the present instead of the past? Don't worry too much about the answers. They'll change, and that's normal. 
Don't worry, either, about putting things in their rightful places now. The chapter you think comes first may later turn out to be your fifth chapter. Things change as you go, and inspiration comes while you're writing. You can't sit down and just determine the best shape of your book because your book wants to tell it to you as you go. Just write. Start now. Take it day by day in small steps. Aim for your word count. Don't stop until you're done. You've got this.